Welcome to The Bottom Line. I'm Pastor Rick Utzi from Maranatha Community Fellowship in Plain City, Ohio. Last week, there was a story out about a Google employee who was living in a box truck in the Google parking lot. And he's been doing that for five months now. And the reason he's doing it is because uh, when he was an intern there, like the summer before, it actually cost him like $2,000 a month just to have a one bedroom, just to rent out one bedroom at a house with a lot of other people in it. So he decided that instead of paying that much money a month, he was going to go out and buy an old box truck and just move it into the parking lot, put in a bed, a dresser, and a place to hang his clothes, a little place to hang his clothes. And that's pretty much all he has in the box truck. There is no heat. There's no air conditioning, no electricity, no water, no bathroom. I mean, it is bare existence. Now, he can go into Google and he can eat three meals a day. Um, he works out in the morning. He takes his shower there, so he has all that taken care of. He uses the bathroom there. So all those basic necessities are taken care of where he works. And then he just sleeps in this uh, box truck that has just the bare minimum. Now, most of us wouldn't choose to live our physical lives that way. That is not how we generally want to live our lives. And yet, spiritually, I think a lot of us, a lot of Christians, live that kind of existence. And I want to read some verses out of 2 Peter, the first chapter, that kind of talks about the kind of life that God wants us to have. And it says in 2 Peter um, 1, 2 to 4, um, Peter's telling the church there, those who, who know Jesus Christ, may grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. It says, His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who called us to His own glory and excellence, by which He has granted to us His great and precious or his precious and very great promises, so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desire. So here we can see that Peter says, you know what, you can have God's grace and you can have his peace and you have all things to pertain to life and godliness. And he's granted to you great and precious promises and, and you're partakers of a divine nature doesn't that sound like an abundant life that God wants us to lead and live? And we can have that inner rest and deepness and peace and contentment in our souls that, that Jesus wants for those who, who know him and identify with him. And yet, I think we believe, or a lot of us just think, hey, if we just say, I know Jesus Christ is Savior, that's enough. Right? That's enough for me to have the kind of life Jesus wants. That's enough for me to have this abundant life. And, and, and as long as I know Jesus, I can live my life the way I want, with my own desires, with my own passions, serving myself and not others, and I'll be just fine. Let's see what God, through Peter, has to say in the next verses. It says, because of all this, because of the great and precious promises and that we're partakers of a divine nature and we have all things to pertain to life and godliness, it says, for this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue, which is moral excellence. So there's one thing. He says, I need you to supplement your faith, your trust and belief in Jesus Christ with these things. If you want to have the kind of life Jesus wants for you, Here's what Jesus says through Peter that you need to do. You need to add to your faith uh, virtue or moral excellence. You know, Jesus walked in moral excellence when he was on this earth. He says, add to that knowledge. You know, Jesus was God. He had an intimate knowledge with God the Father. It goes on and says, and, and add to knowledge self-control. Jesus, when he walked this earth, had self-control. Jesus, when he walked this earth, did the things that God wanted him to do. He had steadfastness, which is patient endurance, which is Jesus walked this earth. He left heaven and all the glories that were there to walk on this earth, to go to that cross. Patient endurance, because he was going to go to that cross to die for you and me. Patient endurance. A lot of times we just, we have no patient endurance. 
You know, we, we, we throw everything on Facebook and, and complain about other people on our life circumstances to try and get pity and, and put others down. I mean, no, that's not what God wants us to do. He says you need to have steadfastness and godliness. You need to have God's will foremost in your mind and want His will and desires to be done in your life. And then brotherly affection. You know, it's not just about loving ourselves. It's about loving our brothers and sisters in Christ and other people. And then he says, of course, add to that love. That is the foundation on which all these are built, is love um, for God first and foremost and then for our neighbors. And then he goes on to say, you know what? If you have all these qualities and they're increasing and you're growing in them, he says, then they will keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, we can have a knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ and be ineffective and unfruitful and living in a box truck, bare existence. But he says, if you have those qualities we just mentioned, if you're thinking about those things, if you're building those qualities in your life, you will be effective and fruitful for Jesus Christ. And he says that you won't be, he says, if you lack these, you're nearsighted and blind, and you've forgotten that he has cleansed us from our formal uh, former sins. Jesus Christ's love cleansed us from all sin and shame and, and he defeated Satan when he was on the cross. He paid for our sins. The wages of sin is death. We have new life in him and abundant life if we follow Jesus Christ. And then he goes on to say um, practice these qualities. If you practice these qualities you will never fall for in this way there will be richly provided for you an entrance in the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So here's the bottom line. We can choose to live in a spiritual box truck if we want by just serving ourselves and not serving Jesus Christ and others. Or we can build upon that faith that we have with the qualities that we just talked about and then we can have true peace and joy and abundant life and we can have the things that Jesus desires for us to have. We can have all those things if we would just concentrate on him and not just be selfish and live for our own lives. And if you want a good illustration of that, for your homework, go read Revelations 3 at the very end when he talks about the Laodicean church and Jesus' words to them, how they thought they could have it all. And he told them what empty, miserable box truck lives they were living and he told him they needed to repent. And so, in closing, I just want to entreat all, encourage all of us, let's lead a productive and effective life and not a box truck life, okay? Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time on The Bottom Line.